what are the mechanisms through which the mind influences the body and vice versa? Can philosophical theories like dualism and physicalism adequately explain this relationship? See, mind and body are two ends of the same thing. They are psychosomatic. They are linked. The difference is simply how we experience and document the changes that are happening in these two zones. For us, language and the description of an experience is as important, sometimes even more important than the experience itself. Because we are creatures of memory. We are not so much creatures of experience. We experience things and we don't really dwell on them. An experience happens and we forget all about it. Our life is a collection of selective memories, thoughts and descriptions of experiences that we have developed a relationship with. So if you ask an individual anything about life, they won't be able to explain anything else apart from a life that they remember as selective memory of all the things they have experienced, they remember a few things. Life is blissful. My life is a torture. I love this. I hate this. That's about it. You won't find descriptions of breathing, silence, stillness, consciousness, aliveness, awareness. It's not a part of our memory at all because these things are always there. You cannot change them. You cannot do anything with them. They simply slip into the background. But these are the things you are experiencing every moment. Every moment you are experiencing you. You are experiencing the sensation of being alive. You are experiencing physical sensations, emotional sensations. So much is happening in the moment. But your mind is not interested in all that. It is only interested in description of experiences because that is what it can remember and reproduce. It's like when you are making a movie, you want to make a movie that is emotionally engaging. You don't want to make a boring movie. You don't want to make a movie of things that are very obvious. You don't want to make a movie of someone waking up in the morning, brushing their teeth, having breakfast, going to work, coming back. Although that might be the most accurate movie. That's what people do day in and day out. But that's not what we are interested in. We are interested in dramatics. What's going to happen to this guy? That's the mind. The mind loves to show us the movie that we want to watch and enjoy. It does not matter whether it's pain or pleasure. As long as it's engaging, it will find a place in our memory. So how does 
the mind influence the body firstly mind and body do not register themselves existentially in our memory what they are is completely hidden from our experience of life and remembering of life that is why you can write hundreds of books on what the body is what the mind is how do they work what is the relationship between them and still know nothing about them this baffles people when they actually go through an experiential learning through a meditative process and discover the true nature of the mind the true nature of the body that is what awakens them oh i have just been stuck in a world of ideas whatever i thought was my body was something else entirely i didn't know my body at all i didn't know my mind at all existentially they have been operating on a totally different plane totally different mechanism and i have been stuck in the world of sensations and dramatization of experiences which i identify as my life that is why when we talk about the mind we always talk about it in terms of some qualities mind is intelligent mind is creative mind is pure torture but we are not talking about the mind at all we are talking about our selective memory and description of the mind so the question is what is the mind only when we understand the true nature of the mind we can understand the relationship between the mind and the body how the mind influences the body and why should it influence the body what is their relationship dualism and physicalism these are two primary philosophical expositions of the relationship between the mind and the body physicalism says everything is physical your body is physical your mind is simply electrical signals and impulses generated in your brain we are not yet at that level where we can explain everything that is happening or how it's happening but some day neuroscientists will figure it out we are in the process eventually we'll be able to figure out exactly how consciousness is being generated in the brain how memories are stored how are they retrieved everything can be explained but the fact is we haven't explained we don't know what consciousness is we don't know where it comes from this one uh, famous philosopher who said i do not believe in consciousness because i cannot find an organ in the body where it can be he believed in the physicality of things so much that if he cannot find a body part capable of creating something it doesn't exist for him so consciousness is simply a delusion a by product of all the mental activity now from this point of view mind is a product of the body which means it exists for the body it exists to aid the body in all its biological existential processes what else 
is the purpose of the body. Whatever the purpose of the body is, to stay alive, to reproduce, to repair, to heal, the mind has to aid in that process. Otherwise, why would body create the mind? If we look at physical body as a product of evolution, then mind is also a product of evolution. It did not come from somewhere else. It exists to aid the body. This is only the theory. What does our practical experience of life tell us? It says the exact opposite. Mind doesn't care about the needs of the body. So much so that it can even destroy the body. Mind is so powerful, so authoritative, so filled with itself that it sees the body as a nuisance. It sees the body as a disease, as a disturbance. Mind doesn't love the body. That is why it can pick up a desire. It can pick up a habit that can be totally detrimental to the body. And this is what we struggle with on a daily basis. If mind were to be simply an extension of the body, if the body had created the mind, then all our problems are solved immediately. Mind exactly understands what is needed to be healthy, to be happy, because we know that negative emotional states, fear, anger, frustration, eventually settles into the body. It affects the body. Some theories say we age because we suffer in the mind. If there was no suffering at all, if there was not a single negative thought, not a single fear, we would not age at all. That is how powerful the relationship between the mind and the body is. If mind is a product of the body, then life would be so blissful, so simple. Mind would do exactly what is necessary for the body. Now, what are we struggling with? We are struggling with a mind that does not care about the body. It is interested in accomplishing or completing its own pleasure cycles. Once it gets into a loop of deriving pleasure out of something, it simply wants to complete that loop, which is what we recognize as a habit. If it enjoys smoking, it will smoke. You cannot tell the mind, this will kill the body. The mind will be like, so what? Who is this? Why should I care about this body? I am eternal. I am transcendental. I can smoke all I want. I can drink all I want. I can do whatever I want. And the body is like, no, you cannot do whatever you want because, you know, we are physical. We are limited. We are bound. Mind does not understand any of this because in actuality, mind comes from a completely different space. It belongs to the non-physical part of us. The actual mind that we are talking about is a deathless, eternal, conscious entity. That is why it is afraid of nothing. What we recognize as fear in the mind is the fear of the body projected on the mind to stay alive, to not be hurt. But if the mind is left by itself as pure intelligence, as pure consciousness, there is no need for it to be afraid. If you didn't have a body, what is the meaning of fear? In your mind, you can go anywhere. You can engage in all kinds of dramatic activities because you don't have a body. 
in that moment you are enjoying that experience you can become a part of a horror movie enjoy that and come out of it but the body cannot body has to be very cautious because for it pain is real suffering is real death is real and everything sticks it scars the body mind is totally different mind doesn't get scarred even the worst of memories if it chooses not to remember it dwell on it it can ignore it it can forget it all together it takes little bit of effort to reloop it to not keep on going to the same place but once you have taught it how not to go there it won't go there you can all together forget an experience of the mind 